In this video, we'll see how we can insert custom data inside our list views here. So for example, you want to put something that is going to be um, fetched via custom function or another method. And uh, the way to do it in list view is quite different from detail view and edit view. So if you're doing it for detail view or edit view, I suggest you look up this post here. It's been um, put in the web archives. And you can see that this, this can be done via custom function. So we can specify a function for a specific field. Then we'll include that field using a metadata. And then that field is going to display whatever this function has. For list view, it's, uh, it's pretty different. If you specify a function, it's, it's actually just not going to do anything at all. So in our case, what we'll need to do is the following. So the first thing that you will do is create your list view. In my case, I'm creating a custom list view, and then I'm uh, going to put it inside inside the following file. There is a separate video that explains how to create the custom list views, uh, but essentially I'm going to put it inside my uh, custom modules, name of the module, views, then view dot name of the view. And uh, here is what it looks like. So it's going to be, basically it's going to require the original uh, view.list.php file. If you're dealing with a legacy module, you may need to specify that module's specific list view. But once again, there is a different video that explains it. We're going to create the class, which is going to be the name of your module, followed by the word view, and then followed by the actual custom view name. And we're extending the view list. This class is found here. So once this is done right now, this is all empty. So not something that you need to worry about. You will register this custom view inside your controller. So we're going to go to the controller file for your um, module, which in this case is going to be in custom modules, name of your module, controller.php. And then uh, we're going to specify, we're going to register that view. So the way that we do it is going to be public function name is going to be action underscore name of your custom view. Here we're going to register the view. And then here is the tricky part. We're going to uh, indicate what is the custom bean that should be used for this view. So this is inside that bean. This is where the magic is going to happen. So what we need to do first is we need to require a file that is going to contain this class. We do it in the very top here. So it's in custom modules, name of the module. This can be anything. So just uh, um, select the file name and inside this file. So we're basically telling the system. So, hey system, when we're using this view, I want to use this bean to display my stuff. This is the bean that's going to contain my data basically. So we're going to open up this file and take a look at what it, uh, uh, take a look at the insides of that specific file. So this is a very simple example, but just to get you going, the first thing that you'll do is you'll require the original bean file. So it's going to be not in custom, but just in modules, the name of your module and the name of your bean file. It's going to be different depending on what your uh, project uh, module is obviously. So this is going to contain the original bean definitions. And then we're going to create our custom class, which is going to be based on this uh, file here. So we're going to be extending the class name that's found here. So this file contains this class and we're extending this class. And basically this class that we have here, this is like uh, the same exact thing as your original bean, but we're just extending it and we're going to be modifying this. So as you can see, show commissions here is what you're going to find inside the controller here. This is the na same name. So please mind that that's very important. Show commissions uh, underscore C is the name of this class. And once again, this path here is what you're going to put here. So this is just cluster, crystal clear. The next thing that we'll do is we're going to create a, a method called get list view data. We're going to create a temporary array 
that is going to hold all of the uh, data that's contained inside the list view. So all of this stuff is going to be put inside the temp array here. And then the last thing that's left to do is we're going to basically indicate the data that we want to show. The simplest example that I could put here is uh, we're going to delete this just not to confuse you. Is I said that for the field name external broker name C, I just want you to output blah. So when we put, uh, it's going to basically do this for all of the fields are going to be just uh, blah, right? I can make it this more uh, a bit more tricky so I can specify actually like a custom function to use which is a fetch unit name and this custom function there's another video that explains how the custom functions work but you're going to put it in your custom utils file which is in custom extension application extension utils custom utils and then here you can specify the function name and the function name is going to return great name so if I do that it's going to just put everything as great name. And this is super versatile. You can basically do put any type of data that you want. You can put a link in there. You can modify the links that show up. Uh, it's a, it's very a flexible. It's a very flexible solution for modifying the data just in any way you want. One thing to keep in mind, and then we're going to return the temporary. So that's that's what's going to like override uh, whatever is there now with uh, whatever it is that you put in there. The one thing to keep in mind is that when you're specifying the field names, they need to be in all caps. So in my example, when I created this custom field, the field name looks like the following. So it's basically external broker name C and I was scratching my head I couldn't get it to work why because this needs to be in all caps so when you're putting like for example you're putting in a new field and it's not working just make sure uh, that this field name inside the um, inside this temporary is in all caps and then it's going to work if you want to take it a step further you can uh, actually fetch data related to the bean and I can show you this here inside the um, the following like more complex example is uh, you have access to the oops you have access to the bean properties such as name for example so you have access to this and then name so you can uh, fetch a whole bunch of uh, data here and the, the, this is actually a good example of how you can modify the URL so in my case I wanted to put a URL that points to like a, a custom action, a custom, it has a return module, return action, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that stuff is specified here. So if you found the video at all helpful uh, and don't mind, please do leave a like. Um, I'll be making more of these videos at least for the next uh, couple of years, I would say. So please do subscribe not to miss anything important. And if you have any questions, please let me know. And thank you so much for uh, watching the video.